Okay, I can tell you what to do, but you're not gonna like it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I know that uh, I talked last time about Shutterstock and their pricing structure. So I just want to let you know, I've been watching a lot of videos. There are a lot of videos that have been made about Shutterstock and the new pricing structure and everybody's upset and rightfully so. But you know, really, this is really drastic measures and probably will destroy the stock industry for any of you wishing to make a living at it. Uh, I used to make a pretty good living at stock photography, but what really went by the wayside was when digital came out. And let me show you why. Out here I have four file cabinets, four drawers each. Each drawer is filled with sheets of um, slides. Now these slides were all stock images that I took when I was younger. When I used to travel, I have traveled a lot more than I do now. Can't even get these things back in there that tight. And um, so, all of these drawers just have tons of them. As a matter of fact, I even have some 4x5s here. And uh, let me see if I can find some for you. I don't know if I have them in this drawer. Maybe this one might have some. Um, I also shot on medium format. Now, yes, here they are. Here's some medium format. So let me show you some medium format slides like this. So in stock photography, what you used to do is go out and you spend money on film. And you would go out and shoot and what you thought people would want. And sometimes you get some list as to what people wanted and you could shoot what they, uh, what they needed. And you would invest in all of this and then you have to send all these slides to the agencies. Now I have two more of these file cabinets in the house that have all of my family photos in them. Pictures of my kids as they were growing up because I took pictures of them and sold them for stock too. Just like many of you are probably doing right now. And um, I had a big investment because this was my nest egg when I retire. Well, you can see where they're at. Now, when digital came out, all of the stock agencies, and I have roughly 80,000 images here. I had twice that many in the various stock agencies at the time. And back then, you would make 25, 10 to $25 an image. And that's after the stock agency took their half cut. That's how much you'd make per image. And then along came Microstock, which is what all of you are dealing with right now. And now, I don't know what they would call it after Shutterstock gets done with you. I guess that would be um, Micro Nothing Stock, maybe? I'm not sure. But this is what we used to have to do in stock photography. And I thought, you know, the, the t at the time it was told that, you know, if you had... For every image you had in an agency, and we're talking about a different image, we're not talking about the same type of image, like if you had, you know, 50 shots of a bald eagle. Um, for every shot that you had in the agency that was different than all the other ones, you could consider making a dollar a year. So if you want to make 50 grand a year, you had to put in 100,000 images. Now, that was then. Let's go back in the office and talk about Microstock now. Okay, so back in the office. So, I don't know if you noticed out there, but... Um up in the upper corner or on top of the file cabinet is an old scanner. And when digital first came out, I started scanning all of my images in uh, to make them digital, but uh, they never were uh, the quality that you get out of a digital camera. It surpassed that rather quickly. So as you can see, all of that effort. And now each one of those slides had a label on it. We had to label them. You had the database that you had to keep track of everything that you send out to everybody. You had to pay for it all to be shipped out. Now, when these stock agencies all went under, and they were generally privately owned, when they all went under, um, it was too expensive for them to send the images back. So they asked if I wanted to buy it, you know, send them back. And of course, that was cost prohibitive for me. So I said no, you know, and I, I had copies. So I lost a lot of images that way. So when I hear people talking on uh, about Shutterstock, about they've invested into their portfolio there, you know, and they don't want to lose all that time and effort that they invested in it, I understand that. But trust me, what you do in digital now, although it does, I'm not discounting the amount of time that you put in it, it's a lot of time. Uh, it's nowhere near what we had to do when we shot slide for stock. Now, like I said, you got a lot more money then. And uh, things were based on usage, like, um, you know, 
generally when you sold an image to a calendar company uh, that went for a minimum of 250 bucks 200 dollars each image and a lot of times you would sell them 12 for a whole calendar but um now with microstock what happened was that uh corporations took over the stock agency and there's a lot of money to be made and i know you think that well you know shutter stocks doing this because they're hurting well, well we'll look at the numbers here in a minute but um there's a lot of money to be made in this uh and unfortunately it used to be half went to stock agency half went to the contributor which was a fair split but has the corporations took over and the stock agencies got much larger, they required more of that money to go to them. And of course, less went to you. Um, so now it's just corporations are doing what corporations do. They take more money from you. And a lot of you have, you know, invested time and um, effort into stuff. And I listen to people talk about their stock earnings and they have 500 images here, a thousand images there. That's not the amount of images that you need in the stock agency to make money. And in micro stock, you need a lot more than that. Now, like I said, back then when we were making some money, you had one image and different images. Like when I said 50 bald eagles, it's not, you can't count all 50. That would count as one. And then you'd have another type of bird. That'd be another and so on and so forth. Um, but you had to have 50,000 different images in there or 100,000 different images in there to make $50,000. It was generally about 50 cents an image average because, you know, not all the images would sell. So, like I said, you could make money and then that accounted for about half my income at the time. And when that fell out, I started going into other different directions. Now, I'm, you know, at the later end of my photography career. I've done it all my life and I will continue to do it up till the time I die. But right now you know i don't need that stock income now I, I do do stock stuff because i like going out to shoot it gives me an excuse to get out and photograph uh, wildlife which is what i love to do and macro photography which is what i love to do so i still submit the stuff but uh, i make my income in a lot of other ways uh other than stock stock just is money that comes in that i can use for buying new equipment things like that now you as a photographer you're investing in camera gear all of this stuff all this money the camera gear the time to get to places all of that and you're getting 10 cents an image a quarter an image now you know and it's going to go down to 10 cents an image pretty soon well as a matter of fact today it goes down um and so you're getting less and less money and it's just going to be impossible for you ever to make a living at stock photography so my suggestion and I said in my last video that I'm just going to leave my images in there till the end of the year. And the reason for that is that I was at the 20% mark anyway. So it's not changing uh, for me. That, that's just going to stay the same. But at the beginning of the year, I'm not going to go down to 15%. I'm going to withdraw all of my images and be out of there. Uh, I may even take them out earlier now that I've looked at the numbers for the, the agency. Now, I, I actually watched the gentleman uh, video and I'll, I'll put a link here and I hope he doesn't mind me saying his name and I apologize I probably should have asked you first but Jason Yolder Yolder I hope I'm pronouncing your last name and I apologize if I didn't he uh, had one that was called Shutterstock what are you thinking and it's why Shutterstock why and um, I'll put the link to that and that's worth watching because he brings up the point that he goes and he checks out the financial statements uh, from Shutterstock and I just want to do a little bit more of that just to show you why I think it's a good idea for you to pull your images out and please bear with me till the end. I'll explain everything. But if you look at Shutterstock, they have it, uh, they have their operations statement and um, they go back to 2015. And now the numbers at the very top, that's the amount of income that they brought in. That's the amount of sales that they have. And in 2015, they had $425 million in sales, $425 million in sales. 2016, 494 million dollars in sales over. I'm rounding stuff up here. Uh, 2017 is 557 million dollars, and in 2018, 623 million, and in 2019, 650 million. So every year it has gone up. The amount of income has gone up. So they're bringing in money. There's money coming into the, the company. Now, total operational expenses have also gone up. Um, and you know they've gone up quite a bit um, so in 2015 they were 384 million dollars of operational expense 
uh, in 2016, they're $448 million, $449 million if, if you actually round up. Uh, then in 2017, $531 million, or $530,762,000. In 2018, $590,798,000. And then in 2019, $630,368,000. I'm sorry. 630 million 368,000 in income. Now, the income, um, the total operation expense in that, and then you had the income from the operations, and then you had the net income at the bottom, which has a few more things deducted out of it. So the net income for 2015 was 19 uh, million. Uh, for 2016, it was 32 million, so that went up quite a bit. Then for 2017, it's 16 million. And then for 2018, it's uh, 54, almost 55 million. And then for 2019, it's 20 million. So the operation expenses got way more and took out more of a chunk out of the total revenue than they did before. Now, operational expenses also includes payout to us. That's, you know, that's a part of it. Now, that's not a big part because even at, at 40%, if those of you that are up at 40%, um, you know, that's, that's half is going out to you at this point, okay? But not everybody's half. They're, I would say, you know, they have over a million contributors. Uh, a lot of them are not at 40%. Most of them are at, you know, 20 or 15. And a lot of people that are on YouTube, from the numbers that they're talking about that they have submitted, uh, they're probably down in the same boat as I am, 20, maybe 25%, maybe 30%. Um, so anyway, back at the numbers. So, you say, well, you know, why are they making this drastic cut in um, your income? And that's because you are a commodity to a, to a corporation. There are over a million of you. And I heard one guy say that, you know, he thought that maybe uh, Shutterstock has too many contributors and they want to get rid of that. And, that. and that's not true. One of the big advertising features is the fact that they have a million contributors. And uh, so that's a, that's a big plus for them. And they want more contributors. Uh, they, you know, they don't want to get rid of contributors. They want more contributors because the more contributors that you have coming in from different sources, um, the more you can lower the price for everything because it's going to be impossible to get all million contributors to pull out all of their images. That's just not going to happen. And a lot of people are going to leave them in there because, you know, they don't have income coming in from other things and, and that's an income and they're going to take a hit, but that's what they got to do. And I heard even people say, well, it's micro stock. What do you expect? Well, yeah, but you should expect to get paid something. I mean, you created this image and this stock agency wouldn't exist if it wasn't for people like us. If there was nobody out there taking pictures, what would these people sell? They would sell nothing. So the main thing that corporations are interested in is this line here that's shares, the net income shares. And so everybody has shares in the company. And um, so in 2015, it was 54 cents. Then it went up in 2016 to 93 cents per share. Then it went down in 2017 to 48 cents a share. Then in 2018, it went back up to a buck 57 in shares. And that was a pretty good, pretty good year there. And then it went down to 50 cents a share in 2019. So 2020, there's gonna be some issues obviously uh, with the pandemic and everything, you know, stuff is taking a fall. So. Um, maybe, you know, Shutterstock is trying to cut the bleeding there. Now, the only problem with that is that's not a short-term fix. That's going to be a long-term fix for them. So once we start starting over every year, that's going to happen every year after that. And so the first quarter of um, Shutterstock's income is going to show a marked improvement, even though there was um, the pandemic. Now, we still have these last two quarters to go, and some people are going to be dropping down in, in today. Uh, other people are going to remain about the same. I'm not sure how it is for everybody, and perhaps you can leave a note down below as to what happened with you. But your income is definitely going to go down. Now, is it worth it to stay there? Well, let me, let's talk a little bit more about this income per share, and let's bring up. Now, Jason brought up the fact that... Um, $17,534,280 were paid to executive officers. Um, but one of the things that I noticed that was payment to the executive officers is that a lot of them um, 
a fair amount of their income came from stock awards. So, um, you know, stock awards are important. If you look at the other compensation and, um, you know, the incentive plan that they have, that they make money, uh, optional awards that they get, um, you'll find that a lot of them, a majority of their income came from the stock shares. So there are two things to do to increase the stock share or the amount of money that you're going to make. Um, one thing is to sell more, which they are doing every year. They seem to sell more and, you know, the uh, total income goes up. Uh, but the other thing is to cut out some of your expenses. Now, what are the major expenses? Well, the major expenses are that you have a million mouths to feed. And some of those mouths are getting 40%. Some are getting 15%. So is there a way that you can make some of those mouths only take 15%, at least for part of the year, and this is going to help make you more money throughout the year. And so that initiates this cut in all of our pay. Um, to use just one example, uh, the stock award uh, to the chief executive officer was $4,597,471 in stock awards. So if and he, uh, that was awarded in 2019, which is when stock, uh, when the stock numbers, you know, let me just move this so I can, was at 57 cents a share. So if next year goes up, even if, you know, 2020 goes up a little bit, um, you're going to make money. And it generally shows that it goes up every other year and then goes down and goes up. So obviously you can make money in the year that it goes up and sell out all your stock and maybe get out of the business if I wanted to, you know, that's, that's what I would do. You know, I could, you know, the stock would go up, I could sell it and then, you know, make a tidy profit. But to give an example of that, if the stock went up next year or the year after to the same price that it was in 2018 at a buck 57, um, this is the amount that you would make right there. So, that's all you worry about. A lot of these executive officers, that's all they're going to be concerned about is the amount of revenue they get from their stock options. Because again, to increase that, you either sell more, which Shutterstock is doing a good job of that. They're selling more images. Every year they sell more images. They make more income. Um, but the other big expense is all of us. Now, like I said, we actually hold the power and this is where we are shooting ourselves in the foot. Now, many of you are not going to like what I'm going to say now. And I'm sorry, I'm just laying it out on the line. Sometimes you gotta be hurt to, to understand what's happening. And I don't like it any more than any of you do. Trust me. I spent, as you saw out there, a lot of money in stock photography, thinking that, you know, at my age now, I'd be able to retire and just shoot what I want and, you know, live off the income that should have been coming, generating from all of those slides out there. And that didn't happen already when I got chopped at the knees before. So now this is more chopping at the waist with the micro stock. And then now with um, shutter stock going in, even making it smaller, I'm sort of getting chopped at the neck right about now. So what we used to make $25 on a shot, um, you all are going to be making 10 cents a shot. And back then the cost of living was nowhere near what it is now. So there's no way you can ever get ahead. There's no way you're going to put enough images in a stock agency to make a decent amount of money. Uh, to live off of. Now, some of you can. I mean, some of you can shoot all day long, uh, get models and do all that, but your expenses now are going to be so so far up there that it's going to be unbelievable. Now, the thing about it is that if you stay in Shutterstock, you okay what they do. And let, let me tell you, Pond5 made a really good video when they uh, tried to get people to convert over to exclusive because they wanted to level out the market. They wanted to keep the market where it was at because they saw the market fall out in photography. There was nothing they could do about that. They wanted to hold the market in videography because videography is, you know, really booming now. And um, so they wanted exclusive because people are willing to pay more if they know that they're getting a video that nobody else has. Right now, if you're submitting to all the stock agencies, the same exact video is out there all over the place. So what happens is, and, and I know this for a fact because I was an editor for 17 years for a couple different magazines. And when you needed images or if you need video, uh, you're going to go to a stock agency, you're going to check and see the price there. And you can call up your rep and say, you know, 
I want to get this, but you know, Pond 5 has the exact same one for this price. And then they'll say, oh, we'll get it a little bit lower. Then they're going to call back up the other stock agency and say, well, so-and-so is going to give it to me lower. Well, what ends up happening now is that Shutterstock is going to be able to go to the lowest of everybody. So when they call over there and say, you know, I, I want this video, this aerial shot of downtown Los Angeles, you know, or something, um, then they're going to give the lowest price possible because they're going to make the most money because they're paying most of their people 15% now, especially at the beginning of the year. And um, the other agencies aren't going to be able to do that. So eventually the other agencies are going to have to follow suit. So if everybody pulls out of Shutterstock, deactivates their account and pulls out, I know you don't want to do that. And I don't blame you. And you're probably not going to, and I understand that completely. And trust me, I don't have to worry about it because uh, I don't make my living on stock photography anymore. That's not, you know, it's just a, a side income now. But if you don't pull all of your images out of this stock agency, this stock agency is going to continue to do what they're going to do. They're not going to change their mind because you sign petitions and all of that stuff. They don't care. You notice that they put out this notice and they kept quiet and they let you all complain and cry and do all that you want. But then they know that eventually you're just going to give in because you have no choice because you don't make enough money to have a choice. So the creative world, you guys are very talented out there. I've seen the pictures that are up on this agency. Um, there's some fantastic stuff out there, better than what I can produce. But your value is going to be really, really low. And it's going to continue to go low. And if a majority of people pull out of Shutterstock, I guarantee you the other agencies will not do this. They will not take this price structure. But... If most of you stay in Shutterstock and say, well, you know, that's the way Microstock is. I got to live with it. Then all the other agencies are going to do that. And eventually you'll make a penny per image. And, um, you know, you think about that. You think about the amount of money that goes out or that uh, they're making off stock sales. And yet you're hardly squeaking by and you're producing the stuff that they're selling. So, you know, taking 85% of what you're producing is a lot of money. If you have 15%, and even if you're a big producer for them, you get penalized too. You go down to 15% at the beginning of the year, and then you have to scratch, you know, just scratch and crawl your way back to the top. That's just the way it's gonna be. So I know this is hard truth. I apologize if I offended anybody about this, but this is just what corporations do. They take as much money as possible and they're gonna take it from you now. And Shutterstock is, I shouldn't say take. Shutterstock is not taking your money from you. You are giving your money to them. And like I said, it doesn't make any difference. The rest of this year doesn't make any difference to me because I'm at the same that I have been, but I'm not gonna go down to 15% the first of the year. So I will definitely be pulling out all of my stock stuff uh, in December. And uh, again, you know, Shutterstock sold a video of mine for 60 cents. I got 60 cents on it. And, um, you know, that's really a low price for a video. The amount of stuff that you have to use to make that video, it's really a low price. And there are other ways to make money with video and other ways to make money with shooting that doesn't involve stock. Uh, stock is nice because you can sell off the stuff. And that's, that's the other way you can look at it. Like, you know, I have all these images. I've had all this video. What am I going to do with it? I might as well make something off it, even if it's a penny on a dollar. It's something. But staying here, you're just lowering your price. And it's going to continue to go lower. And like I said, it doesn't matter to me. But all of those of you that I watch your videos and you're much younger than me, and you're just starting out, um, you're, setting, you're setting yourself up for your future. And you're basically saying, I'll work for less and less, and less, and less. Anyway, that's my rant. Um, you know, please do subscribe. I actually do some positive stuff and I actually talk about how to make photos and uh, how to shoot video and stuff on this channel and uh, things like that. So please do subscribe to the channel and give me a like down there if you liked the video. If, if you don't like it, please tell me what you found objectionable, objectionable about it. Let's have a discussion. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that are below. I try to answer all of them uh, if I can. So um, I wish you all the best of luck and your endeavor in photography and videography. And um, hopefully um, we could 
stop this downward trend together. And that's the only way we're going to do it is stop it together. Thanks for watching.